Good evening and welcome back. This is it's good to be here today as well. It's 8 p.m. UK time, so it is time to start our live event. And please let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. I'm your host, Caroline, as always. And today we have another webinar today with Dr. Fernando Sanchez. Hi, Dr. Fernando. How are you feeling tonight? Hello, night. Very good. Thank you so much for inviting me to this webinar and Good night to everybody. It is definitely good to have you back. This is our next webinar. I think it is our third webinar with you. So I'm very happy that you have decided to join us once again and have prepared a presentation on such important topic. Very often, very difficult topic as well. So uh, as you can see, it's immune factor and assisted reproduction. So of course, uh, as always, we will start with Dr. Fernando's uh, presentation. And afterwards, it will be time for your questions. So don't forget to type the questions uh, in the chat section. You can do it during the presentation or later on, and Dr. Fernando will answer them for you all. So uh, don't hesitate. If you have anything on your mind, just go ahead and type it in. And uh, let me just briefly tell you that, of course, Strong Get Together events have been brought to you with a special help of our ambassadors and partners. As always, I want you to see all of them are right here. And of course, as you can imagine, it would be very hard to, to create such uh, such um, big <laughs> Strong Get Together um, initiative, initiative without their help. So thank you. And of course, we will now go to the presentation. And remember, this is being recorded. So you will have a chance to watch this. It will be available uh, on our site tomorrow as well as our YouTube channel. So, um, OK, I guess that is it for me. And Dr. Fernando, are you ready to start? OK, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to explain a thing that is uh, a little bit complicated because now uh, everybody is talking about the immune factors uh, in uh, reproduction. And uh, I think it's important if we can tell uh, directly what are we talking about. And uh, in the implantation depends on a lot of factors, a lot of different factors. One of them are related to embryo quality, some of them are related to the technical uh, of the transfer and the materials we use, and some of them are related to endometrial receptivity. Uh, probably if we put numbers to this, the embryo quality is more important because uh, sometimes we, we have implantation in the tubes and there is no endometrial in the tube. So endometrial receptivity is important. But endometrial receptivity is not depending only on uh, immunological aspects, you know, depend on a lot of uh, factors like the window of implantation, on endocrinic uh, factor, uh, thrombophilic, metabolic uh, factors, infection, different aspects. So the uh, immunologic aspect of implantation is only one part of the implantation, but for me uh, is one of the most important parts of the implantation because this uh, the relationship between the embryo and the mother is made through the immunologic uh, system of the mother so uh, we need the uh, uh, to have a very good uh, immunologic system to help the embryo to implant so uh, this is the the thing we are trying to to see so in general just to remember we have two types of uh, in, in, in immunity. One is the natural immunity uh, system. This is related to the implantation, also is related to the infection like virus or bacteria in the first, uh, in the first uh, uh, contact with this uh, agent. And later we have uh, uh, an adaptive immunity which uh, work with antibodies uh, with cells to control all the effects we have. So this, uh, these cells, these antibodies also produce some, some uh, substance, uh, we, we call this substance cytokine, and these cytokines are uh, chemic mediators in the body to help the body to do different things, like for example, open the vessels in the time of implantation and this is very very important and we produce this cytokine uh, all and in the in in that uh, in the 
first contact and also in the later contacts of the of the antigen with the body and depending on the immune response we can have an immune response with antibodies or we can have an immune response uh, mediated by cells so all of these are very important because depending on that we are going to uh, have one kind of immune response or the other and this immune response is also mediated by uh, the id that uh, the uh, cells has so, uh, the embryo has uh, an id and this id is mediated but one thing we call uh, hla uh, antigens with this hla antigens is the identification of the embryo and this identification of the embryo is uh, is recognized by the immune system of the mother especially by the natural killer so you have to remember hla uh, c here or you have to uh, remember hla g or hla f that is uh, some information that the embryo gives to the mother immune system to answer to this uh, to answer to to this uh, Embryo. So this is the, the basics, and uh, the, what's what's happened first. The the first uh, things that happens in the when when a woman is going to be a mother is that uh, the first contact usually begins with the action of the semen. Uh, a, a woman has intercourse, and they have semen, and this. Uh, the spermatozoa reach to the uterus and the, when this spermatozoa that is different to the mother reach to the uterus began a number of changes immunological changes in the uterus to help the embryo later to implant so the the action of this spermatozoa is very important when you control uh, for example, you are doing uh, intrauterine insemination uh, in a woman alone or a woman with uh, uh, another woman like couple or woman with a man like couple, the chance of becoming pregnant is a little bit higher when you uh, have a man uh, like couple and it's due to the uh, uh, seminal fluid that reached the endometrium. So this is important. This began all the changes and once uh, we began these changes all the cells in the endometrium began to change and these changes are very very important and the main and the main cell in the endometrium especially in the time of implantation is the natural killer the uterine natural killer so the endometrium for me is an immune organ is as important as can be uh, another immune organ in in the in the body so this is the door for an embryo to implant is is the the open door for an embryo to implant and it's related mainly to this natural uterine natural killer cells so uh, uh, these cells i'm telling you change during the pregnancy change during the uh, line, during the cycle so this is very very important and it's important to know because when we began to study this kind of cells we began to study in the blood uh, and in the blood there is no correlation at all no correlation at all the values of these cells in the blood with the values of these cells in the uterine cavity so we have to think only in the values in the uterine cavity not not in the blood well uh, this is the natural killers and this uh, thing mainly most of the people uh, thinks that uterine killers are also always the same and the bad thing that uh, an uterine killer has is the name the name of uterine killer natural killer is, is horrible name for, for even for a cell but uh, when we are talking about the uh, uterine is the upper one there are cells that are mainly producing cytokines to help the embryo to implant 
and when we are talking about the peripheral natural killer are uh, mainly cytotoxics, they are real killers, but they are mainly in the um, in the stream, in the blood, not, not in the uterus. In the uterus must be here, this uterine, and they are good cells, not bad cells. And these cells produce cytokines and growth factors, and these growth factors that you see here in green help the implantation, and there is only two, interleukin-2 and TNF-alpha, who are inhibiting the implantation, but most of these are helping the implantation. So just to remember that natural killers produce a lot of things, and these natural killers uh, are the, making the difference between a transplant and the implantation. Uh, it's easy to remember if you think that, okay, all the things that the immune system do in uh, organ transplant are absolutely different and the opposite that the immune system does in the implantation of an embryo. So, if we do a transplant and the kidney and the kidney is different from the uh, donor and the receptor, you have a high chance of uh, um, this transplant not going good. But if you have a different embryo and the mother, you have high chance of that this embryo implant. So as much difference as easier is to, to implant. Well, uh, I'm telling you that the, the communication between the maternal immune system and the, uh, and the embryo is mainly to, through the, this natural killer, and this natural killer, uh, the, the embryo communicates with the natural killer through these antigens I talked before, the HLA, and mainly HLA C, E, F, and G, because the, the normal identification of the cells the embryo doesn't have. This is one help for, for the embryo and immune system. And the natural killer identifies this HLA through a receptor, KIR receptor, killer immunoglobulin receptor. This receptor of the natural killer identifies the embryo, and they are classified between two groups, A and B. And depending on the combination between KIR A and KIR B, and the combination between the in the, the identification of the embryo HLA C1 or C2, the natural killer response helping the implantation or difficulty the implantation. And this is the thing we have to learn. Depending on this combination between KIR and HLA, the embryo helps or not to implant. So uh, these changes that the cytokines do are mainly in the endometrium and mainly related to the blood vessels because we need to open these blood vessels to give enough blood ribbing to the embryo to implant because if we don't have if we don't have these cytokines reaching to the blood vessels we can have problems in the embryo like implantation failure like abortion, like prematurity, like preeclampsia, or intrauterine growth retardation. And all of these things are relating to a bad communication between the embryo and the natural killers in the endometrium. These natural killers doesn't produce enough cytokines and the vessel doesn't open. And we have all of these problems. So, uh, it's a way of simplification, but this is the, the way I'm trying to explain. And uh, this is mainly in the first part of the cycle, uh, macrophages and natural killers. And the second part of the endometrium, we began to talk with uh, another uh, kind of uh, cells, uh, lymphocytes mainly, lymphocytes T and lymphocytes B, and also macrophages, and change also the identification because now is the placenta who presents mainly the HLAF to identify the, the difference. So 
depending on the time of the uh, pregnancy, the cells are changing. And uh, we have, if we have an answer, if you remember in the beginning when we talk about the answer through antibodies is uh, good and we have a normal pregnancy, this is the answer we call TH2. And if we have an uh, answer, the um, immune system, an, an answer through uh, the cell immune system, we have an answer we call TH1. And it's not good. We have we will have problems of implantation with abortion, with preeclampsia, with uh, intrauterine growth retardation, premature deliveries, and also. So this is the influence of the immune system, and we can study this immune system. But uh, there is no uh, a clinical evidence in uh, for all for for everybody. We we need to do individual assessment because there is no one study who is for everybody and we have one answer and okay you said okay this uh, you have this number of natural killers so you are going to have these problems or you have these other numbers and you're, you are going to have these numbers so it must be uh, in an individual way of doing and we have to have a biological plausibility when we are talking about the treatments we need to do. So this is the study. And uh, you have to remember the main diagnostic we have is clinical. We have to look at the clinical symptoms, not to the analysis system. Because if we only look to the analysis, we are going to treat papers. And we are not treating papers. We are treating women. We are treating uh, couples but not papers. So there is not a question of, okay, I have this analysis that say my antibodies, anti-nuclear antibodies are high, I have a lupus. No, you only have paper with ana antibodies, not you don't have a lupus. So it's clinical. You have to remember also to, to talk with your doctor because the, the diagnosis is clinical. And there is a treatment, of course, there is a treatment. We have a lot of uh, treatments for immunological system, but you have to remember the concept, homeostasis concept. We can have exacerbated immunity, and we have to reduce this immunity to help the implantation. We, have, uh, we can have uh, inhibited immunity, and we have to increase this immunity to uh, help the implantation or we have some imbalance in the immunity and we have to uh, modulate this immunity to help the implantation. But this is mainly. And the, the treatments we that we do in ex exacerbated immunity are very good for this kind of uh, situation, but they're very bad if we have uh, inhibited immunity and also the change. So it's very important to classify exactly what we have and what we need to do. And uh, well, uh, I'm trying to, to, be as, um, to be as short as possible to have uh, the much time we can have for, uh, for uh, questions. So I'm open to the questions and uh, I understand this, this matter is a little bit complicated, but uh, well, uh, Hope uh, uh, to be clear. Okay, open to questions. And wonderful. Thank you so much for that explanation. And of course, as you mentioned, it's definitely not easy to understand. So thank you so much for bringing this topic for sure. And yes, it is time for our Q&A session. So as always, remember, you can type them in in the chat section. And actually, someone is typing. We need to wait a bit for those questions. Uh, everyone was listening to, to your presentation, so they are getting on with the questions, I'm sure. So let's uh, give it a minute, of course, and uh, we will definitely have a question. We just need a minute. Yeah, okay, there is one right here as well. Let me have a look. I suffer from, not sure, sorry, here, disease. What shall I consider? Okay, for example, the Crohn disease. Crohn disease is one of the things that affect uh, the immunity system. We are uh, with a problem. Uh, one of the main immunity organs in the body are, are the good and the 
And if you have a Crohn, you have a problem with this uh, immunity system in, in your in your gut, and uh, there is a lot of uh, antigens who reach the body through the uh, intestine. So uh, it's very very important to do a treatment to uh, reduce this exacerbated immunity before to get uh, pregnant. Obviously, there is not a uh, uh, magic uh, war. Okay, everybody who has Crohn has to do corticoids, or everybody who has Crohn has to do uh, this kind of thing or, or, or the other. But for sure, uh, the Crohn uh, is uh, is uh, an illness that uh, can affect very um, in in a very important manner the uh, chance of become pregnant and thank you so much for your very first question of course explaining and of course dr sanchez as you can see a lot of questions coming up right here and yeah. let's have a look at the next question i'm about to start with a donation i'm 43 and never got pregnant nor had i ever uh, had a miscarriage i want to make sure i have the best chances do you think the immunological exams will be useful if so which ones? Well, my recommendation in your case is not to do any uh, any study uh, looking for uh, immunological exams unless you have uh, a previous illness or you have a, a previous problem in your family. Exactly, if we talk about immunological exams or when we talk about uh, thrombophilic uh, situations or uh, infection situation. If there is no uh, previous problem, uh, you are going to begin with an egg donation and you never get pregnant or have a miscarriage, you have the higher chance to, to become pregnant. And my recommendation is, is to do nothing. So just the normal study, just to be sure that your endometrium is okay. And with this began the, the treatment. No, no study, no more, no studies unless there is an indication. Understood perfectly. Again, thank you so much for that. And uh, of course, there are more of those coming up here as well. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. How, uh, what would you suggest we, pro could you suggest we pro progress with understanding if you have immune issues? I don't know. Um, How could you, yes, yeah, suggest we progress yeah. with understanding? Okay. Uh, well, the, the idea is if you don't have a, a, a problem, and uh, we can talk about um, that we have a problem with immunological uh, situation, if we have implantation failure, implantation failure, we are talking about at least uh, three transfer, and this three transfer with uh, uh, blastocyst states and no risk in a woman, less than 40 or in an egg donor program or if you have a, a repeated miscarriage or you have a previous immune problem mm, my recommendation is not to uh, begin to look to the immunological system because the problem in, in when you are doing this is that sometimes you begin to find uh, results in the studies that are not so clear and we began to do treatments and uh, most of the times I, I work in uh, in a unit for uh, implantation failure most of the the, the time when a, a, a woman comes with a couple of cycles filed we have to take out the treatments because they are doing treatments that sometimes are the treatment that uh, is bad for the women it is not the immunological problem they have is the treatment that they are using and, and the first thing you have to do is to take out all these treatments to know what's happening so this treatment you began to do because you have analysis and you do this treatment so only do the treatment only do the the study is there is an indication an indication is implantation failure repeated abortion or a previous medical condition 
and wonderful thank you so much for that explanation to this question again and let's have a look okay there's um there are more questions so this was an interesting thing you do you recommend to take different immunomodulation like cortisone and part and ivig together well no uh, the idea is is not to take this together uh, because uh, it's not going to work if uh, you are using uh, corticosteroids, intralipids, or intra, uh, intravenous immunoglobulin, they are uh, using the same target. And if you combine this medication, you are going to uh, reduce the answer of your immune system and your are not going to get pregnant because you need that the immune system works good mostly all the treatments you are uh, we are using in in, in medicine are uh, made for um, the uh, transplant uh, information or for the rheumatologic information and these treatments are for reduce the answer of the immune system mainly the, the corticosteroids but you need most of the time you need that the immune system works good to have pregnancy because if your natural killers doesn't work doesn't produce cytokines doesn't move the blood vessels to open the blood vessels so this is a treatment corticoides or intravenous immunoglobulins only if you have a exacerbated immunity because you have a previous problem but not for use together for sure all right understood again thank you so much let's have a look next question is right here what are your thoughts about the role of cat micro microflora in infertility this is very very important it's a very good question and uh, for sure it's very very important the the problem is that uh, uh, in this moment i can tell you exactly what you have to do to uh, improve your microflora but the microflora is important for sure uh, this is the first barrier of the uh, of the body so Microflora is, is like uh, the, the, the control for all the, the uh, virus, bacteria who arrive to the body are first in contact with the microflora. And microflora are bacteria that are good. So it's very, very important. And again, thank you so much. And next question is, when comparing an embryo transfer to an organ transplant, can we assume that an embryo from a woman's own egg will automatically have better chances of implanting than an embryo from a donor egg? Well, this is the, the thing I try to explain. It's absolutely the opposite. Uh, the, the, the immune system in a transplant works in an opposite way that the immune system work in a pregnancy. If you are different, you have higher chance to implant. If you are different, you have higher chance to reject a transplant. So it's the, the, the opposite way, completely the opposite way. And again, thank you so much for that. Now, next question, uh, we have two parts of it, okay? So let me start with the first one. I have Crohn's disease and I have been advised that I should do a test for NK cells, but have also been told that steroids cannot be used for treatment currently. What can we do? And a follow-up is right here. Uh, to add, I had two miscarriages this year, one naturally and one via IVF. So, well... Uh... One of the biggest problems we have uh, in, in, in reproduction is when you have uh, to study the immune system. So there is not uh, 
uh, there is not only a question of natural killers. Uh, of course, for me, it's important to have this information in your case, and you have Chrome, because in your, in your case, we have to modulate the answer of this immune, uh, these, these cells very good because you have a problem of a chronic uh, inflammation in your body. So it's very important to reduce this chronic inflammation and we can do it, for example, with corticoid steroids, but we can do uh, with uh, um, some type of uh, diet or we can do with intralipids or we can do with other things. And there is not the only way to reduce this chronic infl inflammation. And after that, this chronic inflammation, we have to know exactly what kind of answer does your, your natural killer. For example, how is your uh, kill receptor? How is the uh, HLAC from you and from your husband? And because depending on that, we are going to, to know how is the answer of your natural killers. If the answer of your natural killers, for example, is low, we need to put more stress in, in, in your endometrium to, to have more activity of this natural killer, independent of, of your chrome. But if, for example, you are using, uh, uh, you are having a low uh, answer from, from the natural killer, for example, you are with AA with C1, C, C1, C1, we need to increase the, the uh, we, we need to reduce the, the this stimul. And using donor sperm, for me, is the same. So there is not a problem. If you use uh, donor sperm, uh, my recommendation, if you have a, a male couple, is the same uh, because the only need we the only thing we need is the seminal, seminal fluid. Is not need to spermatozoa in this seminal fluid. And if you don't have a male partner, uh, well, we are going to lose a little bit of this stimul this stimulus of the endometrium, but uh, it is not tragic. All right. Again, thank you so much for that. And as you can see, plenty of questions ready. So uh, let's have a look at the next one. What is the best exam to check for the natural killers in the uterus? Well, this is an endometrial biopsy, and we have to do this endometrial biopsy in a time uh, around implantation, around five days of progesterone or uh, seven days uh, after the peak of LH charge. So uh, in this time, we do, you have to do uh, endometrial biopsy. And in this endometrial biopsy, by immunohistochemic, you have to look for some mm, combination of uh, receptor of the uh, lymphocytes to know if you are looking for uh, lymphocyte T or lymphocyte B or for uh, natural killer, it is another kind of lymphocyte. So for example, if you take out CD3 uh, negative, just with this you avoid all the lymphocyte T and you have to uh, look for a combination of, of uh, CD56 uh, and CD16. So CD3 negative with some combination of CD56 or CD16, you can decide what kind of uh, natural killer you have in, in your uh, endometrium and also in the uh, the, the biologists uh, give you the number of, of these uh, cells in, in the endometrium. And thank you so much for this. Next question is, my wife has high NK cells. Is there anything she can do in terms of lifestyle to help or to improve my immune system? Well, the, the, the immune system with high natural natural killer cells is good. So to have high natural killers is not a problem by, by itself. So the question is, what kind of natural killers we are talking about? If we are talking of uterine natural killers to help the implantation, or we are talking about uh, cytotoxic natural killers. So it depending on that, 
And regarding to lifestyle, uh, the recommendation we, we used to do is all the things that are good for uh, your uh, quality of life are good for your immune system. The best recommendation is to do some exercise, not uh, not heavy exercise, but uh, some exercise around half an hour of walking, for example, is one good exercise. Take very uh, take care about the uh, your diet, not, not to eat too much. Uh, oh my English, <laughs> uh, fat. Uh, not, not not to eat too, too much fat. And uh, also uh, uh, to uh, have a, a relaxed life, to sleep uh, at least a number of hours in the night is very important. So all the things that helps you to, to be good helps your immune system. And wonderful once again. Thank you so much for explaining that. And next one is right here. Dear Dr. Sanchez, I had a pregnancy with donated embryo which went perfectly fine until seventh month. I was and I am in perfect health otherwise. And then suddenly preeclampsia. What would you suggest for my next try? Well, the preeclampsia is, is a, a problem, a very important problem. It's a problem of, of implantation. And the uh, it's very difficult to 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 treat this this uh, preeclampsia. Mm, you have to know that if you have preeclampsia in the first pregnancy, you have a higher risk of having preeclampsia in the next uh, pregnancy. And usually, uh, there is some uh, kind of control uh, we do with uh, aspirin, low dose uh, aspirin, around one hundred mg. Uh, 100 milligrams per day since the beginning of the, the pregnancy and also uh, to control the uh, Doppler of the uterine artery uh, around the 20 weeks of, of pregnancy. There is no way to prevent 100% the, the preeclampsia and uh, well, if you uh, decide to go with uh, with another uh, pregnancy, you have to to know that the risk exists and there is no way to avoid 100%. It is much more frequent when we, you are uh, old, older than 45, and it's much more frequent when you are talking about donated embryo, and also it's much more frequent when you are uh, talking about twin pregnancy, so the recommendation is to transfer only one embryo to avoid the, the chance of twin, but we couldn't change the age and we couldn't change the uh, origin of the of the embryo. So uh, just uh, to, to look and, and to have a good control of, of the pregnancy. And thank you again for this. And another question is, what do you think about care AA by the mother and HLA C1, C2 by the father? And can IVIG help for a healthy pregnancy? Well, it depends on the HLA C uh, of the mother because the care AA is not a good combination, but it's not a good combination only in the case when, when the mother has uh, less C2 than the, the embryo. For example, in this case, imagine that the, the mother is one HLA C1, C2. Nothing happens and there is no need for any kind of treatment. Uh, uh, for example, uh, well, the mother is C2, C2. There is not a problem and you don't need to do any kind of, uh, you don't need to do any kind of treatment. The only reason for doing a treatment in, in this case is uh, when the mother is C1, C1, because you have a 50% of chances that uh, having a baby C1, C2. And in this case, uh, my recommendation is in better than intra uh, IV is uh, to use intralipids. Uh, the results are almost the same and the, the price is around 10 times less. But with C2, C2, no problem at all. You don't need to do any kind of treatment. And wonderful. Thank you so much for that explanation. And let's go back to our previous patient, okay? Because she has added some uh, something. So, uh, does care analysis is recommended? 
obviously, if you are studying the, the immunological system, you need to kill analysis. If you do, if you study the uh, immunological system, you need to do to study the cure. You need to study the HLAC. You need to study the natural killer. You need to study the macrophage. You need to study the uh, microbiota. Uh, you need to study the uh, uh, anti-nuclear antibodies. So there is a couple of studies that are related to the uh, immunological study. So it, and here is is mandatory, of course. And perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, sorry, one more from Bridget. Okay, so let me just go straight away to this one. I would like to add to my question. If you said that Prokhamsa is more frequent in donated embryo, what is the reason, the immunological care? Well, the, the, reason, the reason for that is not the immunological uh, care. The, the reason for that is the uh, way of implantation that has the embryo when is donated and when, when is not donated and the, the answer that uh, the embryo does. So the uh, way of implantation is a little bit difficult and the risk of preeclampsia is a little bit higher. For example, you, uh, if you are talking uh, about same age and same problems, uh, about uh, women to have uh, preeclampsia with uh, own eggs is around uh, 2%, 3%. At uh, 38, uh, 39 years of age. If you are talking about the same age and uh, donated embryo, the risk of pregnancy uh, or preeclampsia is around six percent, practically the double the 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 own age. But we, we couldn't change this. That's the, we have to live with this because there is no way to change this this uh, risk of preeclampsia. All right, again, wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, let's have a look at the next question that we have. I'm sorry, just want to check here. Okay, are you currently prescribing steroids for immune treatment? Is there any increased risk of getting coronavirus if on steroids? Well, usually I'm not prescribing steroids. It's a medication that has a very limited indication and usually is uh, indicated when you have a previous uh, condition, previous Ill illness, and, and it's very difficult to, to need steroids to reduce the immune system because uh, usually we need to increase this system, not, not to reduce. And uh, when you use uh, steroids, you don't have more risk of uh, getting coronavirus. Uh, even for, for coronavirus, the, one of the treatments you do for coronavirus are steroids. And the, the main problem of coronavirus is that the answer of the immune system is very different between uh, persons. And the, some person, the answer is absolutely normal and has no symptoms or very few symptoms. But some persons have a very high response in, in terms of immunity. And this uh, answer, this, this height answer, is, uh, is the problem of the coronavirus. And for these persons, the steroids are very good because they, they are reducing the immune response to coronavirus. And this is one of the treatments that nowadays are the best, the best treatments for coronavirus, the, the steroids. But only in cases that the immune answer to the coronavirus is very, very high. And that is the person who has problems. Again, thank you so much for that. All right, next question. I am HIV positive. I have had multiple IVF failures. I had egg donor with PGD. Do you have any other recommendation for me? Thank you so much. Well, probably uh, if you are uh, HIV positive, uh, you have you are taking some treatments to, uh, to control the uh, immune system. So uh, probably in these cases, we, you, you need to modulate the answer of your uh, endometrium in answer to the, uh, to the embryo. Uh, well, we, we 
probably need a, a lot of studies on, on you just to be sure that uh, uh, this could be a possibility, but uh, you have a donor, you have PGD on, on this embryo, so uh, everything in, from the point of view of uh, genetic is okay. Uh, probably if you increase the chance with uh, some uh, filgastrin uh, uh, growth, fact growth factors in in, in the uterus or growth factors subcutaneous can increase the chance of, of pregnancy. You need a, a couple of studies, but with this uh, situation, it uh, could be an approach for you. A neopogen is growth factor. Again, thank you so much for that. And let's have a look. Next one, it's a short question here. What is the difference in NK uteral versus blood test? Well, the main difference is that the action is completely different. The, the uterine natural killers are natural killers who are mainly producers of cytokines. And these cytokines are chemical products that stimulate the blood vessels and stimulate the surrounding of the natural killer. And the blood uh, natural killer are uh, natural killer who are killers and they attach to the virus or attach to the cells, strange cells or the bacteria, the bacteria and destroy this bacteria. They produce a small amount of cytokines and uh, these, for example, are CD16. Uh, positive when you are looking at the uteral natural killer are uh, CD16 uh, mm, negative. So depending on, on, on the if the natural killer are mainly producer of cytokines or mainly cytotoxic. Blood, cytotoxics, uterus, uh, cytokines. The, the, the same name, but uh, completely different functions. Wonderful, thank you so much again. And again, there will be two parts of the question, okay? So I have had three unexplained recurrent miscarriages. A couple of doctors have suggested I take prednisolone to see if it helps. I have high thyroid antibodies. He does not think I need all the tests at this stage. I am 44. I am considering donor eggs. Are there any things we need to consider to reduce the risk that my body rejects the embryo due to immunological reasons? Well, if you are 44, uh, the uh, reason for this uh, uh, miscarriage is in 99% of uh, possibility is due to a uh, genetic problem of the embryo. So uh, my recommendation when you have a 99% of chance of having a problem is first of all to avoid this problem and probably to change to an egg donor program because it could be uh, also an immunological problem. It could be, but the chance of that is only 1%. So uh, 38, 42 and 42. If you go uh, to 42 years of age, the chance of having a, a embryo with uh, a neoploidy is around 87 percent so the chance of uh, of this is uh, important 38 is not so bad but uh, 42 and 42 uh, my recommendation 100 percent is uh, go to uh, egg donor program and uh, try to forget about the immunological problems and do normal cycle of egg donor and your chance of becoming pregnant will be around 70% with no miscarriage. All right, thank you again for that. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the next one. I have gone through several treatments with donated egg cells. Should I ask for an immune, immunity test before the blastocyst will be transferred? Well, if you have done 
uh, more than two transfer with the egg donation cycle, of course. Of course, because there, there is not the logical. So if you do a transfer with an egg donation cycle, the chance of becoming pregnant is around 70%, mainly 60%. Okay. Uh, if you do a second transfer, you have the 60% of, the, of this 40. So you reach 84%. If you have three transfer, you have more than 90% of become pregnant. If you are not pregnant, for sure, there is, an, there is a problem. There is not a, a question of uh, a statistic, but you have to look for immunity. You have to look for thrombophilia. You have to look for anatomical reason in the endometrium. You have to look for uh, infections on the endometrium. You have to look for uh, uh, the blood flow or your uterus. So there is a lot of things you have to look for if you have two, three, five times of uh, egg donated cells. Not only immunity, but immunity is one part of this and it's important, but there is not the only pro the problem. You have to look to every, every place because it's not logical to have uh, two or three treatments of egg donation with no pregnancy. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. We will be slowly finishing, but of course there are a few questions left, so let's get to them right away. Again, there are like two parts of the questions, so let me go to the first one. I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I don't eat gluten, soy, lactose. I'm 42, got pregnant last year. IVF first cycle, miscarried nine weeks. NK, normal result. I had just I had five cycles, failed. What examination recommendations would you suggest? And let me just show you the second part as it is here. Uh, so my NK cells were checked by a blood sample, not in the mitrium biopsy. Was that wrong and maybe invalid? Thank you. Well, <clears throat> There are two things. Uh, beginning for the second part, uh, if you are looking to the uh, if you are looking to the natural killers in blood vessels, you can have an answer that could be important for a rheumatologic point of view, but not for. Uh, I have no information at all. This is not related with pregnancy or something uh, related to pregnancy like miscarriages or implantation failure or anything so mm, this forget about the results if they're good or bad it's not important because they are not related with the the, the pregnancy second thing uh, okay you are uh, you probably the situation in this moment is is different than uh, it was before because you are talking about uh, you have five file cycles and uh, probably to do these five five cycles you, you take a couple of years and uh, before i don't know what can happen if you are 38 or 40 years old but now uh, you are 42 and uh, with 42 years old and this uh, history with uh, five file cycles the recommendation is not to look for immunological problems or anatomic problems this uh, the recommendation is to change to uh, egg donor cycle because uh, uh, probably uh, there is some immunological uh, situation with you because you have Hashimoto uh, but with 42 years the, the value of uh, the indication of the 42 years is much more higher than the value of the indication of the thyroiditis. So you could do both things at the same time but if you are going to go with, with your own eggs you have to do with the PGTA just to be sure that the embryo is normal and the chance to have a normal embryo with 42 is lower. You have to think about it. And again, thank you so much for that explanation. As I mentioned, there are more questions, but we will be finishing very shortly. But don't worry, of course, all the rest of the questions, I will simply forward to uh, Dr. Sanchez and his team so that they can help you out, okay? And uh, let's have a look at the next question. So can intralipid help for high NK or only for high NK in the blood? 
Yeah, intralipids can can help for high uterine natural pillar. Can help, but de depending on the indication. The, the, this is the thing I tried to explain in the very beginning. So there is no one uh, one test, and with this test you have to do this or you have to do the other, depending on the number. Is the um, global evaluation of the uh, women that um, can help you to decide what kind of treatment this woman needs. Uh, for sure, intralipid can help, for sure. But depending if you this uterine natural pillar are cytotoxic or not, on when do you do this biopsy, it was the window of implantation, it was before, so depending on that. All right, excellent, thank you so much. And I guess now it will be our final question for today. But as I mentioned, all the rest uh, I will forward to the team, okay? And of course, Dr. Sanchez. So the question is, is it, is it possible to use steroid treatment after four implantation failures? Yes, if there is an indication. Of course, you can use this, this treatment, but this treatment is, it has to have an indication. It's not, okay, I didn't do this, I'm, I'm going to try this because if you uh, began with this and the next you can do uh, IV or you can do heparin or you can do uh, neoprogen or you can do and you are doing another cycle another cycle another cycle if you have four implantation four, four cycles with no no pregnancy you have to know exactly what's what's happening before to do any kind of treatment and if the <coughs> steroids are indicated very good but only if they are indicated. If not, you can, it can be a worst idea. And once again, wonderful. Thank you so much. And as I mentioned, we will be finishing for today. Uh, so Dr. Sanchez, thank you so much for a brilliant session. As you can see, more and more of those questions are coming up, but uh, I just want to assure you that we will simply need to forward the questions to you and your team. And I'm sure you will be able to help them out, right? So to all of our patients and everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you so much for your questions. I know it's a tough topic, so uh, we, we definitely want to have more of those uh, topics. So thank you again, Dr. Sanchez, for bringing this to us. And is there anything else you would like to add? Because as you can see, lots of thank yous are coming up right here. Thank you. Thank you so much to, to all of you. Uh, always this is a very uh, uh, polemic uh, theme to, to uh, discuss and uh, I'm open to answer all these questions through the mail and there will be no problem. Thank you so much to all of you and congratulations for this kind of webinars that I think they're very, very interesting. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much once more. And everyone, uh, I just also want to mention, remember, this has been recorded. Therefore, tomorrow it will be available on our website and also on our YouTube channel. So you will be able to see it again. And the questions that haven't been answered today will be forwarded. And uh, everyone and Dr. Sanchez, have a wonderful evening. I know you are busy, but thank you so much again for, for being with us to today. This is definitely an interesting session. So huge thanks and i just hope to to be able to do it once again it's always a pleasure to have you back with us okay bye perfect thank you so much have a good evening bye. everyone